I'm Ben. I'm Chelsea. I'm Anna Lloyd. I'm Anna Vince. Daniel Chambers. My name's Sarah McCork. Uh, I'm Deb. Vaughan Brady. You is John Brosker. If I was to play someone else, I think I would probably go for Frank Troy, which is like polar opposite of what Joe is. You know, watching things on Twitter and people's reactions to him. Um, incredible. I don't know, I think, I think Joe has got a certain amount of sort of quiet gravitas throughout the series, so he, he would be quite fun to play. Um, I can't see myself being a Troy. See, I don't consider myself a bad person, but I enjoy playing bad people. So, if it wasn't Frank Troy, probably Boldwood. Probably Jen. I really like her spunk and the way she approaches friendship. Jen. Because I think she's quite to the point and she doesn't sort of mess around. I don't know, I quite like her attitude. Oh, I would love to play Henri. You just, you just get a chance to sort of walk around and be really cheeky and make jokes and stuff. I think that would be great fun. No, as, as, as much as I would have loved to have been in the sort of friends group with everybody, um, I, think, I think I did enjoy playing Boldwood, actually. Not many people would, I can't imagine. I would really like to play Liddy because I think she's just crazy and off the wall bonkers. Um, I would pick Liddy because I actually auditioned for Liddy as well. Ta-da! Uh, I'm Liddy and this is the thing I'm doing now, apparently. Uh, you know, I just thought the world needed to see more of my face and I needed something cool to do, so... Hello, something cool! I think I'd play her a lot differently than Anna, just by being very quirky and loud and outspoken. This is like a tamed version of me. I'm like, Ugh. crazy, like wild, like fire, like. My choice would probably be Bathsheba, just because she's so different to Liddy, and it'd just be a really interesting experience to see what it'd be like acting someone much more calm. <laughs> Well, Marianne is obviously way up there, but I'm a real Shakespeare nerd, so pretty much all the Shakespeare I've done has been really, really fun. I mean, as as I just said, I I, I like I like being dicks. So <laughs> there there was one role I played at, when I was at uni, uh, Peter Curtin um, in Normal by Anthony Nielsen. Uh, he he was like the German version of Jack the Ripper. Other than Bathsheba, I would say that it would be when I did the Polar Express over Christmas and I invented a chef character called Cinnamon. She was very cheeky and very outspoken. I'd make her like jump on everything, climb on things, get in between like parents' legs. True story. And it was so freeing to be in character, to have a kind of system of what you're doing, but you but the freedom to kind of interact with, with the audience. It's probably this one because, I don't know, Lady's so similar to me, but then also I really get to play with the extremes of just her. Yeah, the whole just experience of the web series as well just makes this one. Lady's the best. <laughs> um, I've really enjoyed playing Othello for Restless Theatre Company. Um, I also enjoyed recently playing Mary Vale, who was a completely crazy... Um, hippie in a PLZ survival zombie immersive experience. In a student documentary film based on a real story about this girl who had to struggle with her stepfather going into prison when she was in school. It was a very naturalistic part to play because it was filmed in a documentary style so it had to look like I was being interviewed as her and I just, I really like things that are very naturalistic. I think that's kind of my comfort zone with acting. This is Isabella, the lead in Shakespeare's Measure for Measure. If you've read the play, you'll know it deals with some pretty heavy topics. And also our director decided to set it in 1970s San Francisco and turn it into a musical. So it was rather wild. <laughs> I think I enjoy that production for similar reasons why I enjoy literary inspired web series. By transplanting an old story into a new time or place, you can reveal new aspects of it and it can speak to audiences in a fresh way. How do you pronounce this? Ah, 
Aphita. Aphita. A. I'm... A fit A, surely. I mean, it is literally capital A, then the word fit, then a capital A. A fit A. I know lots of people say different things, but I'm, I'm going to go with a fit A. A fit A. I didn't realise there was any contention about this until very, very recently. I thought it was a fita. But apparently people have been saying it all sorts of ways. A fita, a fita. A fita, isn't it? Or a fita? I think I pronounce it a fita, but then I was told by Hazel that it's actually a fita, so... Now I know. <laughs> I pronounce it as afka. I know, I know it's supposed to be pronounced as a fita, I think. But yeah, I made the I silent. The it does not exist in my acronym. Uh, okay, this is the tough segment. Jen, Joe, Marianne. I would have to kiss Jen because me and Megan, who plays Jen, had this little banter between us where we believe that Bathsheba and Jen would totally get it on. I think I would kiss Joe because he just, he just needs a bit of love, doesn't he? Bless him. Kiss Joe and shoot Jen? Simply because I think she'd survive it. Bullets would just bounce off her or something. Marry Marianne. She does good fish pie. And I do like fish pie. Marry Marianne. Because I think she'd be lovely to live with. Marry, 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 marry. I'm going to ma- <laughs> Sorry, Chelsea. Like, it's not you. It's it's the character when she has a kid and baby scare me and they're loud. And, and there was that one episode where it's just constant. <laughs> Frank Baldwin and, and Henri. Oh, God, this is a really hard one. Okay, well, I'll have to shoot Frank because he's disgusting. I'll shoot Frank, obviously, because he's a massive... Yeah. I'm going to shoot Frank. I'm shooting Frank. Was anyone surprised? I feel like I'd want to kiss all of them uh, and compare, make some notes. I would have to shoot Boldwood. No questions needed. Shoot Boldwood because Boldwood you couldn't kiss because he'd take it the wrong way. If Hazel and I hadn't put this Q&A together, I would suspect that on rehad, just to get people to admit they'd marry him. I feel like I'd marry Boldwood. And I'd be interested to see what he'd be like when he's married. I I suspect he'd probably spend most of his time just going off and weeding the roads. Neera, Billy, Sherry and Robin. And I get to go on a cruise with one of them on this time, so that's quite fun. Oh, I'm in this one. Dear, oh dear. I think it'd be fun to go on a cruise with Neera, actually. Possibly go on a cruise with Neera just to get her out of her daughter's hair. Go on a cruise with Billy because I think that would be that would be fun. She's good at board games. Well, I feel like I I should make things up to Robin, so uh, we can go on a cruise. As long as she can bring her therapist, I'm taking Robin on the cruise. A because that girl deserves a break. B she can see all the architecture she wants, and C we could get up to fun twin shenanigans. Kiss Billy and marry Sherry. I'd have to shoot Sherry just because of how sickeningly cute her and Lydia are. Can I just make it clear? I I don't actually want to shoot anybody. None of these characters. They're all good. Except maybe Frank. Bathsheba, Gabriel or Liddy? Well, I've already kissed Liddy, so that one's done. Kiss Liddy. I would marry Bathsheba. Um, She's a business owner. Sorry, Liddy. Probably shoot Liddy. Or maybe shoot Bath and put her out of her misery. Marry myself, obviously, and shoot Bath. Sorry, love you, love you. Shoot Bath, Uh Kiss Gabriel and marry Liddy. Shoot Gabe. He's not a horrible person, but sometimes you just want to... Just like, what are you doing, man? Come on. Kiss Bath and marry Gabriel, because he's really nice, isn't he? Let's face it. And shoot Bath, because she would definitely survive and probably gain superpowers in the process which would make a pretty good sequel. I'm going to go with marry them all. Screw the rules. Fight the power. Bathsheba, Gabriel and Lydia, marry all of them. That's the only way. That's legal, right? Why, yes, I am. I'm currently playing Philip Lombard in Agatha Christie's And Then There Were None with BG Theatre Productions, which runs from the 6th of June right through to the 27th of July. Um, And then in August, I'm playing Aladdin in Aladdin, so if you fancy seeing Joe strut some moves, sing a few songs, then catch us down at the Palace Theatre and Painting every Thursday night at 6pm. On the acting front, I am recording Jane Eyre for a company that provides materials for people who are blind or have dyslexia. 
I am also part of Travelling Lemon Productions. We are currently working on Twincidence, a new web series inspired by Shakespeare's A Comedy of Errors. The team has a lot of Away From All members on it, which is really exciting. We are planning to release the series later this year. At the moment, I'm touring uh, Network Tales with Restless Theatre Company, which is a show about making up stories about people you see every day on the train and the audience gets a chance to get onto the train with the actors, which is fun and challenging for us because we never quite know what they're going to throw at us. I'm not doing any acting work at the moment, uh, but I am writing lyrics for quite a few people, which is nice because like, it gets me in that music zone and in the writing and stuff. My solo stand-up theatre show about depression and self is currently doing some rounds in Devon. It's coming next to the Barnstable Fringe Festival, uh, running from the 29th of June to the 1st of July, testing me on the dates there. Uh, and I'm also doing a show called Way Down South at the Theatre Royal Plymouth, which is all about the beauty of cheese rolling. So I've got a part in something. I just need to figure out the logistics of whether I can do it. It is a production of The Tempest and Potentially, I'll be playing Ariel. At the moment, no, because I'm kind of stuck in the pool of exams that are A-levels. But um, after I'm shooting a film that's a this sort of psychological thriller, so that's exciting. Um, it, I don't know. I don't know what it's called yet, but I'll keep, I'll keep you posted. Um, I've got a couple of films on the festival circuit. One went to Cannes, one's next... Uh, English Riviera Film Festival, has been at Plymouth Film Festival. I'm also about to go and work for Odd Sox theatre company up in the East Midlands, which should be fun. Oh, I'm doing some uh, touring theatre at the moment. Other than that, I'm just, I've mo recently moved house, so um, it's currently currently full of stuff that I've got to sell, like this rather fabulous Italian style armchair. So if you know anybody who wants a pair of lovely, fabulous Italian style armchairs, then please do do let me know. I think doing such an interesting and different project with the transmedia and the the fifty short episodes. It was really interesting to see it grow because once we had finished filming it, um, it was really interesting to see the Twitter feeds and you know the transmedia that they did. I think was fantastic. I think it was just that I'd never. Not even that I'd never made a web series before. I'd ne I didn't even know, I'd never heard of literary inspired web series. It's, it was like a new format. Um, and it was amazing to see how popular they were, something I didn't even know about. And then I started watching a few. I've loved literary inspired web series since 2012, since the Lizzie Bennet Diaries came out. And I've always wanted to be part of one. So it was a dream come true to be able to be involved in almost every stage of Away From It All from developing it right through to the end of our transmedia. To go on and see the comments that people have left on the YouTube videos is really gratifying, actually. Um, you know, to, to know that there are people out there who, you know, are getting so involved in the story. And it was just amazing to see the, the sort of community feel of the, of the fans um, and the people that make them and watch them. I think that definitely is the community feel that made it memorable. What made making a feature memorable? Probably just the people. I think it would be the people. It's just a really nice group of people. Just everyone. Somehow, Hazel managed to put together the most incredible team of people, like the best humans. Just the best humans. Everyone was great. Getting to know and work with our wonderful cast and crew I feel like I've learned so much along the way. The cast, the crew, there was such a bond. And I can remember the episode where um, Gabriel, Bath, Jen and Joe are watching films. In between takes, I said, like, this literally feels like an episode of Friends. One, because of the brilliance of the writing and the, the, the relationships that they've really caught. But also just the fact that we were just friends. We had a real laugh doing it, and I only spent got to spend a day with these people, but it was so much fun, and they made it such an enjoyable experience. I was on on set for two weeks, just living with Hazel and everyone, uh, the cast that was staying there. It was just so fun. That like, everyone was so lovely. It was, and we just like went out on like the last couple of days. And I don't know. There was just something about about the chemistry 
between all of the new actors was just instantly we bonded really quickly and in the end it it took us two well we had two weeks to film but by the end of it we were like all best friends and yeah it's just so many talented people i have never worked on a project where everyone has been so awesome and i say this all over twitter all the time great team awesome 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 i made a lot of friends from that and um I'm looking forward to keeping in contact and hopefully working with, with people again. A couple of weeks ago I got to meet up with Hazel again for the first time since making away from it all and it just struck me how great it is that I've been able to become friends with people I otherwise never would have met. I had so much fun just being in the same room as everyone else. I like, we all got on so well, I had so much in common. The fact that we all kind of started using the Pokemon movie to well up and get into the right frame of mind. That's my kind of people. And also just being an idiot, just being stupid, makes it quite fun. <laughs> That's it. That's everything. Thanks very much, guys. See you later.